you know that helping the river return to a more natural state is important to all of us, but especially local Aboriginal groups, as they have lived in and cared for these areas for at least 40,000 years. We acknowledge and respect the deep spiritual connection they have to country and pay respect to their elders past and present. We work closely with these traditional owners of the country to try and make sure the work we are doing is culturally appropriate and respectful. At the beginning of the last century, the River Murray was a natural river. It had times when the water level was high and large areas over the banks of the river were flooded. At other times, levels were low and the riverbed was visible in some places. Different native plants and animals evolved to live in specific areas of the river, wetlands and floodplains, depending on their water needs. Some need water all the time to survive and thrive. And some only need water every two or three years and die if left constantly wet. Local Aboriginal communities use their knowledge of these water needs to look after country. However, these variable river levels meant that sometimes it was hard to navigate transport vessels, such as paddle steamers, up and down the river due to lack of water. People also started to use water from the river for livestock, irrigation and other activities. A solution was needed to keep a more constant level of water in the river so that the water needs for both agriculture and transport were met. To solve this problem, weirs were installed in 14 places along the River Murray and all except Yarrawonga Weir included a navigation lock. Navigation locks allow vessels to move from one section of the river to another. The weirs allowed people to regulate the level of water behind each weir, known as weir pools. This meant we could make sure the water level didn't change. Unless there was a natural flood and the water was flowing freely down the river. This meant boats could travel up and down the river easily and farmers could access water for their stock and crops. As communities along the river grew, they could also have a more consistent supply of water. Although this worked well for navigation and agriculture, it hasn't worked so well for our native plants and animals. Without a variable water cycle that supports all the species native to the River Murray, we have seen plants die and animal numbers decreasing. So how can we manage such complicated water needs? We can't simply take out the locks and weirs as our communities have come to rely on the relative stability of the water levels. But we can use the current weirs to mimic a more natural cycle that helps restore health to our wetlands and floodplains. By closing parts of a weir, we can stop water flowing through the structure as quickly. This raises the level of water behind the weir and along the stretch of river between that weir and the next one further upstream. We can also open parts of the weir to allow more water to flow through, which then lowers the level behind the weir. By doing these things at different times, we can mimic a more natural flow of water or pulse in the river. Native fish such as the Murray Cod need flowing water and the faster the better. Lowering the level of the water increases the speed of the water and creates a better environment for our iconic fish. It also allows areas which are usually wet, such as riverbanks, to dry out so vegetation can start to grow in these newly exposed areas. Water plants which are left high and dry start to die and form a kind of compost which attracts bugs. As the water rises and covers these areas again, the compost and bugs attract small fish and birds, such as spoonbills and ducks. The little fish then attract larger fish and birds such as herons, pelicans and cormorants. Raising the river level allows water to spill over the banks and gives them a good water. It also spills out onto the floodplains 
and into wetlands, which are connected to the river to mimic a natural wet cycle. This helps produce a range of different habitats, which support a wide range of plants and animals. As we know, our wetlands and floodplains need to be dry, just as much as they need to be wet. Many of our wetlands are either permanently connected or permanently disconnected from the river, which means they are either always dry or always wet. We can help the permanent wetlands by putting in structures called regulators. A regulator is a bit like a gate that can be opened and closed to let water in, keep it in or keep it out. When we raise the river levels, we can open the regulators to let water flow into and fill the wetlands, mimicking a natural flooding cycle. We can also let the water flow back out into the river to flush out the wetland and remove dead leaves or salt which have built up there. When a wetland has been wet for too long, the plants die and cannot regrow. By closing the regulators and stopping flow both in and out, we can allow the water in the wetland to evaporate, allowing the important drying phase to occur. That way, the plant seeds get to germinate and plants grow as we refill the wetland. Raising the river level allows us to get water into wetlands, but this can only reach lower parts of the larger floodplains. This means valuable black box woodlands miss out, and they play a major role in creating habitat for many of our native birds and animal species. To increase the area we can reach, regulators are installed on major creeks or anna branches that come off the river above a weir and return to the river below the weir. Well, this means we can let water flow onto the floodplain in much the same way as in the wetlands. We then construct banks within the floodplain which help hold the water on the floodplain and give it a better chance of spreading across to these other areas. We need to know when to increase water flows in the river to help our native fish or to inundate or flood our wetlands and floodplains. You know, scientists continually monitor the health of our river by looking at the conditions of plants, animals and soils. This helps us identify which areas are in need of water and which areas need to dry to get the best outcomes for our unique river environment. We can now see how important water variability is to the survival of plants and animals in our wetlands, floodplains and river. A variable river environment provides shelter, protection, food, water and nesting for many native species and will help protect the River Murray into the future.